show. I am your host, Jay Jones. Black Entrepreneur Blueprint was created specifically to educate and inspire black entrepreneurs to launch, build, and grow successful businesses. Join us as we help build an economic power base in the black community by promoting business ownership. If you are currently an entrepreneur or want to be an entrepreneur, We invite you to join us every week here at Black Entrepreneur Blueprint. Welcome to the Black Entrepreneur Blueprint, episode number 342. I'm your host, Jay Jones, and today we have another outstanding and informative show in store for you. Today we're going to be talking to the 31-year-old founder of Figures Communications, Mr. Freddie Figures. Now, Freddie has an amazing story by being abandoned by his birth mother and being adopted at two days old by his parents, Mr. and Mrs. Figures. And at a young age of 15, got his first contract to program computers. Now, subsequent to that, Freddie has built the only black-owned cell phone company in the United States valued at over $60 million dollars. Now, before we get to today's interview, I just want to share a few things with the BEB family. First and foremost, I want to welcome all first-time listeners to Black Entrepreneur Blueprint. Welcome to the BEB family, and please stick around until the end of today's broadcast, and I'm going to share all my social media contact information and my resource links, such as the link to my new book, A New Black Wall Street, Circulating the Black Dollar Worldwide by Building Successful E-Commerce Businesses, and two platforms I've created to help circulate dollars in the worldwide black economy, BeSmartBuyBlack.com and Hire Black Freelancers. Also, I do want to mention the new rebranded, rebooted Black Entrepreneur Blueprint Academy is available. So make sure you check that out at the end of the show. Now, let's get ready to, for today's show. We are live here with Mr. Freddie Figures the head uh, CEO and founder of Figures Communications. Freddie, how are you today, brother? Pretty good, Brother Jones. How you doing? I'm good, man. I'm good, man. Brother, uh, you've got a tremendous amount of success, man, at an early age, and we're going to get into all of that. But first, for the Black Entrepreneur Blueprint family members that aren't familiar with you, just give us a little background on who you are and where you're from. Yes, I'm Freddie Figures. I'm an American inventor, president and CEO of Figures Communications. Figures Communications is a, an American telecommunications company that provides cell phone service, mobile broadband, and international calling services. We also manufacture our own devices, such as smartphones, consumer electronics, um, such as televisions, um, earbuds, and healthcare devices as well. Man, that brother, I got to ask you, how old are you, man? I just turned 31. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. I want I want the light bulb to go off to all you black entrepreneur blueprint family members that are watching or listening to this interview. This young brother is 31 years old and he's doing tremendous things. So age isn't it you don't have to wait until you're 50 years old to start your business. So you can start okay. your business at any time that you deem or you feel necessary. Um, I know you have a very interesting backstory also. Uh can you share with the black entrepreneur blueprint family? Uh, a little bit about your background and your parents who adopted Yes. You. So um, my parents that adopted me, oh, goodness, um, were my everything. Um, my father was a uh, maintenance worker for Florida State University, and my mother worked as a sharecropper um, on a small fir- farm in South Georgia. Cool. And um, my parents... Um, they made the ultimate sacrifice. Um, they didn't have that educational level that you would think of as a, of, of what you need of a high school diploma or degree. Um, my, my parents had wisdom. Um, they was much older. Um, at an early age, my father, um, at the age of eight, he bought me a non-working computer from um, Goodwill. Uh-huh. Um, this computer was a 1989 all-in-one Macintosh. Wow. Uh, non-functioning, uh, we bought it for $23. 
Wow. I'm always fascinated with computers. So I always wanted one, but at, at the time we never could afford one. Right. Um, so when, when we took this computer home, um, immediately I tried to power it on. I couldn't get any power from it. Right. Uh, so I was like, okay, you know, my father has a soldering gun around the house, being that he was a maintenance worker, so I'm going to play with it. Right. Um, I took the computer apart. I saw in the circuit board, just by just looking at it with, with no knowledge at all, looking at, and I saw a capacitor that was burst open and had a small acid leak. So my father had radio components all around the house and alarm clocks. So what I did was I actually cut parts out of the, from the circuit board, from the radios and put inside of the computer, which was a small capacitor on the power supply. Mm -hmm. I started it and voila, I got that computer to power on. Wow. Um, to this day, I still have that computer. And, Get out of here. And, you know, at an early age like that, that was my first um, startup and they're saying, hey, you know, this is something that I, I really have a passion for. Um, and I, I really want to go for it. So I, I started out um, playing with that computer and writing small code on it and, and doing the most I could at that time. Because, uh, again, it, you know, the, the processor was nothing like compared to today. But, you know, we did several upgrades to it. Cool. Um, in addition to that, man, um, share with the Black Entrepreneur Blueprint family uh, how you were adopted and how that happened. Because that situation is touching yes. And, yeah, so I mean, you know, so with that, it's always been a sensitive subject to me. Um, at an early age, I was always thought like you're not you're not wanted, but you know, hey, you know, once you get older, you know, you you understand, you know, certain certain situations in life, um, you you can't let those circumstances define who you are. Um, my biological mother threw me away like day to day trash, um, and I was adopted by you know my my parents, Nathan and Betty Figures. Uh, my biological family to this day, I've never met them, don't know anything about them. Right. Um, I was adopted at um, two days old and knowing my parents was in uh, foster care. Right. And knowing the situation that I came out of, you know, most of the kids that was in foster care that my parents took care of, they had families, you know, right. but for my situation, I didn't have anybody. So they didn't want to send me through that system. So they took me in and raised me as their own and Man. Not to this day, I've never heard, you know, my father transition in 2014, but my mother, I never heard her say, you're not my child. That's a blessing, brother. So yes, you, sir. so you literally, they, they actually found you outside by the garbage. So HR, so, so the HRS, the, the state department um, of children and family services now um, are the ones that, you know, found me and positioned me into the, the, the foster home. Then, okay. Um, then was adopted from there. Yeah, yeah. So, so your biological mother actually left you outside. Yeah, she just. I mean, she just threw me away. And I mean, that there's so many. You know, you know, people they don't really talk about it, but there's so many stories like that across America right. that 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 happens every day. And um, you know, at, you know, growing up, I thought, you know, hey, I I didn't know what the situation was until, mm -hmm. you know, I I learned that you know around the age of nine and um. You know, you know, at first that kind of made me feel unwanted, but you know, again, you know, circumstances mm -hmm. and situations are different for everyone. And at that time, maybe my biological mother didn't have the mental capacity to, you know, mm -hmm. take care right. of a child. So yep. Right. Yeah. Um, that that you know, that that could be a blessing, brother. Because oh, you never course. know where, yeah, you never know what could have happened if if um that you didn't have your your adoptive parents or your oh yes, that, and they was my, they were my everything. They're they're the reason that I'm 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 here where I am today now. Um, That's a blessing. At, you know, at the age of eight, I wanted to be a quarterback, <laughs> but my, <laughs> my parents was much older, so they didn't believe in boy don't go outside and play no ball and break nothing. So they you know they they didn't really believe in that so my my father got me an encyclopedia set and you know my my favorite thing was to do was to read so cool. you know i i continue that continue that on to this day man so let me ask you did you have a natural pro proficiency with computers and programming or was it something that you had to really work hard at it was something that naturally just hit me um when i got that computer at home that that really just took control of me okay. and I I mean like literally I just I, I was just fascinated and I was obsessed with that computer 
Mm-hmm. And, you know, um, just even branching out um, from that, how I really got into the, the, the workplace industry was it was an after school program called Children Are Our Future. OK. And um, I, I was sitting there in the computer lab while all the other children are outside on recess. Um, I was basically the teacher's pet, uh, Mr. Horace <laughs> and he would allow me to clean up the classroom. So mm-hmm. when he to leave. I used to, um, you know, get some of the older computers, put them on a workstation desk and actually start repairing them. Uh, Some of the computers had, you know, um, boot screen um, issues. Um, You know, back in the day, we used to call it the windows, the blue screen of death. Right, Um, right. (laughs) So, you know, I've kind of mastered to get around that without reformatting the operating system Mm -hmm. um, and repairing those computers. And I'm I'm doing this at a at an age of you know eleven twelve so wow they, you know they will like you know wow so the executive director of that program at that time was also the the mayor of um, um my city which was a very small rural city called Quincy Florida um it's in North Florida um you know s- south of um Georgia eighteen miles west of Tallahassee so that's exact location yeah. so. Um, she actually had an opportunity and she took me up to the, um, the, um, city of, um, Quincy and, um, and gave me an opportunity to become a computer technician. I had a full-time job, um, working on their computers. Are you, at what what age, brother? At 12, at 12. So (laughs) I was working, I was working part-time, then going back to school, then coming back. So it was, um, it was really amazing at that time. And and that was my first, that was my, really my first start in getting, you know, um, started with computers. And wow. you know, mastering all of the um the hardware peripheral and everything about them. That's amazing, man. So in terms of at, at that young age, how did it feel to be able to make your own money doing something that you were proficient in and also something that you enjoyed? How did that feel? It it, it was it was beautiful to me at that age. I was really excited. Uh, I, I got to the point where on the business side that it it was it was bad because people knew my passion and my love for it and Mm-hmm. At, a, at a, you know, as a kid, you know, people say, hey, repair my laptop, I'll pay you in candy. So, <laughs> so the money, I, you know, I, I, you know, I've, I've always told people this, um, you know, never have a, a passion and greed for money. I mean, right. you do something good, the money's going to come, you know, have a passion for something you do. I meet people all the time that's been in the industry for 10, 12 years and say, I hate my job. So why are you doing it? You know, you have to, you have to change that mindset. You have to love what you do and have a passion for it. And that's when you will, you know, continue to grow. Yeah. No, nah, that's that's powerful, man. Um, I was reading in one of uh, an article that you had, man, that um, you actually quit school to to handle to do a contract, man. Yes, just, sir. Tell tell the Black Entrepreneur Blueprint family a little bit about that. Um, and what grade were you in, and mm-hmm. how did that jump start you? Yes, sir. So. Mm-hmm. That was um around the age of 15, 16 years old. Um, I had an opportunity to um, write a computer code for a um, a um, oil calibration system, mm-hmm. and you know they was gonna pay you know a, 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 another corporation you know almost four million dollars to um, to create this program. Mm-hmm. You know I went to them and said, hey, you know um, the same corporation that you're you you, you know that declined your offer because they didn't want to take it at the time i said hey i could do it and um i wrote up the proposal showed them exactly how to actually you know do it and i actually did the scope of work without even getting you know paid for it and right that for um um over a million dollars and that was the first time i said hey listen i've got to go directly into the um the private sector so you know it was kind of a it, it was kind of a bad taste in my parents mouth because they right. you know they wanted to go you know um, school, work, retirement, but I wanted to break that. I wanted to break that cycle. Yeah. So man, at that young age, man. So, so what grade you were in? What? 10th grade, 11th grade. I was going, yeah, I was, I was going to the 10th and I wanted to go directly, directly into the private sector. And then that's when I figured out like, okay, Hey, I could turn my passion, my passion into a lucrative opportunity. Definitely. So now when all your other friends are out there going to prom, playing football and all that stuff, how did you deal with that from a social aspect since you were already in the workforce and you were you were already, you know, building wealth for yourself? And I know at that age, most kids, I know at, at 15 or 16, I wasn't even thinking about anything like that. So how did that dynamic work for you with, with your friends and socially? 
So going back to like where I come from and how I, I was raised, again, I was raised by much older people. Um, my parents, you know, when the stoplight is on, you better be in the house. Right. <laughs> you know, with, with with friends, you know, I still had I still had great friends that I grew up with, mm-hmm. but I had to transition my mind around, you know, okay, I'm born here, but I, I don't want to die here. Gotcha. And um my my parents again, just you know, just being around them and mimicking them, you know, they will stay at home bodies. Um, mm-hmm. you know, they didn't they didn't bother anybody and it was kind of like to themselves. So for for me, it was pretty much easy to adjust. I would okay. sit in front of my computer and I could, you know, just work day and night from it. Right. Gotcha. Gotcha. That makes sense, man. Oh, you know what? I forgot to backtrack a little bit because I um in your story in your bio, I heard that one of your first uh inventions was something to assist your father and talk about that and talk about how that's shaped the overall ideology of your company so that was my initial start um you know when when i turned that you know pain into um um, profit but it, it still was something that i could never um you know bring back my right. father, again, you know, um, they adopted me later in life. So they right. was in their 70s. So my father started developing dementia, Alzheimer's. Mm-hmm. So in his cognitive state, he couldn't, you know, walk from the living room to the bathroom. But when he was sundowning, he used to wander off. Right. He would get up in the morning and he would walk 10 miles and, you know, we couldn't find him. You know, mm-hmm. some days he would forget to put on his shirt or his pants, but he always remembered to put on his shoes. Okay. So what I did was I built a circuit board. I put inside the sole of a shoe. I put in a uh, WAN card, a 90 megahertz speaker, and a microphone. So I could, at any given time, I could say, hey, dad, where are you? And I would come directly into a loudspeaker into his shoe. I could tell if he's standing up or sitting down. And once he says one word, um, a notification would pop up on my phone. And I would just get in my car and drive directly to him. Wow. And um at the age of 18 while well, I, I was just turning that was that was that was kind of a, a very depressing side as well because right. when i sold the program that's when my father transitioned so literally like two days after um um and i sold that to a software company that then turned around and licensed that to the the company that we know today is like life alert wow. um, the remote patient monitoring systems so I sold that program for two point two million. Wow! But was but you know worth way more than that now. So right. again, you you live and learn. And um, I still have my father's shoe, um, to this day. Actually, it's r- literally right right behind, right behind me. So, oh yeah. Oh man. Yeah, so that's, yep. that's that's something, man. So at eighteen years old, you sold your bu- uh, sold the the lights. What well, actually sold the software mm-hmm. for two point two million dollars? Yes, sir. Wow. Now, man, now, how did that feel? I know you were going through an issue with losing your dad and transitioning, but how did that feel to you? Um, you know, at first it was, you know, it wasn't an interest to me at all because, you know, I lost something that, you know, meant the most to me. I mean, the the man that, you know, saved my life and made me who I am. Right. But, um, but, you know, I, I took, you know, I learned from, again, you know, from a very early age, being very frugal of, you know, finances of, you know, save every penny you get. So right. instead of me going out buying a car or, you know, something, you know, crazy, I actually, you know, invested all of that money and positioned, you know, the FCC into allocation spectrum um, that I wanted to start my own telecommunications company. Now, um, it, it's funny because I was reading about that. And a lot of times on, on Black Entrepreneur Blueprint, we talk to people about their successes and their failures. And so when I was doing some research on you, uh, I found out that when you were trying to get that FCC license, it, it took a lot of your money. Took every single penny I had. <laughs> I mean, and, and it's and it's funny too because the same day I was going to quit is the same day I got approved. Really? Are you serious? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So so let's backtrack a little bit. All right. So now, all uh, right, you get the two point two million. You sell your your. Uh, your, mm-hmm. your software for that. And now you're looking to get an FCC license for telecommunications, correct? Correct. Okay. So when initially starting out, um, 
what we did was we petitioned for the very rural and underserved communities. So when you look at um, it's parts of the country right now that's still in 2G and 3G that, you know, that don't have the infrastructure and the bigger carriers, they don't look at coming into a very, you know, nowhere bill USA, right. you know, putting that infrastructure there. And then, you know, the return on investment is just not there for a population of three or 4,000 people. Right. So what we did was um, instead of um, cell towers, we use high elevation points. So okay. we started putting up these access points and receivers all around. So we use windmills. We use, um, I, I, gosh, I even used a barn before. Okay. And, um, th they gave us um, WiMAX to um, cover up to 30 miles um, with non line of sight. So okay. that's how we kind of, you know, started out and expanded. So we initially started in the broadband spectrum. Okay. And then we, we ventured over to the, the, um, the voice communication. Okay. So now it's funny because a lot of times people think you start businesses and all of a sudden it's from zero to the top, right? Yeah. <laughs> so you had a lot of success at an, at a young age. Tell us about the day that you find that you were going to quit, but you finally got that approval, man. Tell us what was going through your head that day. I was I, I was very angry with the world. I was like, oh goodness, I have wasted all of my money and resources and back and forth to um, you know, from retainers, from attorneys to, you know, um just pretty much everything. Mm -hmm. And, you know, every time I've got 10 steps ahead, they will come back with a set of questions that would be, you know, to knock me back 30 to 50, you know, steps back. Right. And it wasn't, it just it it wasn't them. It was the, you know. Again, it's, it's the big name lobbyists that works for the 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 CLAX and the local exchange carriers that don't want to let you, you know, especially an African American, you right. know, venture into the telecom spectrum. So right. it, it it was very difficult. And I mean, if for every for every simple question that they they ask, it may have been a a just a, you know, a basic question. I would I would elaborate with a two three page, you know response just that one question to just right. make sure i go over everything completely right um and it just it just goes back to show you like when you really believe in something put your all into it and it will pay off i mean for yeah. some some ventures you know they don't but i mean you still you never you never know what could have happened so just just given that chance that that was all that mattered to me so were you going to give up because you, your your funds were exhausted and you didn't have any more money to fight or you were just to the point mentally where you said, you know what, it's a wrap. It was bureaucracy for me. Um, okay. it was, you know, from the, from, from the funds being exhausted to just, just, just abnormal fees that just didn't right. apply uh, to me. And then just the, the bureaucracy of, um, of trying to become a public service utility just made it very, very difficult. Now, do you think that had anything to do with your, your age and also your ethnicity? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Gotcha. Keeping you, keeping you out of the game. I hear you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. So now let's jump forward a little bit to um, figures communication. So I know you have a plethora of things going on. Tell us a little bit about figures communication and you being, I, I presume, are you right now the only African-American uh communications or, or cell phone or telephone company right yes, now? Yes, sir. The 3600 band. Yes, sir. Oh, cool. All right. Congratulations, brother. Keep Thank up. There. Keep up doing what you're doing, man, because uh, it's, it's an amazing story. So Thank tell you. us a little bit. Now you got the FCC. Uh, go ahead. And now tell us about your inventions, because I know you're an inventor also uh, as being a, a, a super entrepreneur. Tell us about figures communications and what was the first product or service that you came out with? So the first the First product was the Figures X1, which was okay. a development phone that we did for rural areas. Okay. Um, this phone right here was designed to only work in certain uh, geographical areas. So when it traveled outside of that area, it, it wouldn't work. Um, gotcha. And this was for very small um, townships um, in South Georgia. Okay. Um, when, when, when building that phone, um, again, all of our products are innovative. They're different. Okay. But when actually building that phone, I really wanted to take that to the consumer market because personally for me, we got tired of people coming into our operation saying, hey, can you activate my iPhone or activate my Samsung? Right. So we wanted to build our own phone. So that led us to building our first commercial phone, which was the Figures F1. Wow. 
That's amazing, man. So in terms of the manufacturing, did you manufacture like most of the companies overseas or did you manufacture here in the States? So for here starting out, we manufacture in-house. I was actually building phones out of my garage. <laughs> so Are you serious, bro? I didn't have the, I didn't have the resources. So right. I was building I was building phones out of my garage, um, doing everything, the packaging down in um, South Florida in a, in a small facility in Doral. Okay. And um, packaging up everything here and, and shipping out. Wow. Um, the molds the, and everything? Sir? The, the molds, the foam molds? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, the, mold, the molding, everything. I mean, we was building an average of about 40 phones a day. Wow. That's amazing, bro. That's amazing. And I know you guys are continuing to, to manufacture the handsets right now. So I wanted to jump ahead real quick, then I'm going to come back because I want to mm -hmm. ask you about the handsets. I know you have additional iterations now. Mm -hmm. uh, what are you guys up to now? The F3, is it? Yes, sir. F3. Yes, sir. Okay. So when when you're creating or, or, or building that, how the handsets, how has um, being able to integrate the manufacturing affected your profitability and also being able to help you control the vertical as opposed to outsourcing? So it, de it really depends on the volume level that you, you're, you're looking for. Um, for the manufacturing standpoint from us, it's been pretty, pretty great in, uh, on, the re on the revenue side. Um, for our phone alone, it's, it's 36 components that make up the F3. Okay. Um, and we actually control our, um, our bomb, which is our bill of material. So we get to, wow. we source and figure out, you know, this is what we need. This is what we don't need. Instead mm -hmm. of having just a whole bunch of, you know, things that's, that that's not needed. Right. Um, when you look at the big name companies right now, um, you know, they'll continue to build something that's over and over and mm -hmm. they'll just put the name on it from, from a, a, a different generation. Right. But, you know, they do that because, you know, again, they're, they're, they're publicly traded. So it's not, it's not, it's not for the people's interest. It's for return on shareholders investment. Exactly. So, I mean, every time we build something again, we go above and beyond. Like all of our products are innovative. Like mm -hmm. our first phone was um, the, the F1 that had a multi-user profile and okay. had a, a, a mechanism that prevented texting and driving. So as soon as the phone was in motion over 10 miles per hour, right. they would automatically put the SMS and data in airplane mode. So for the manufacturing aspect for us, it's been, it's, it's been pretty great. So, so does your company look to uh, solve problems? Is that really what you're a tech company that solves problems? So, personally, Freddie is the you know the one that solves problems, but right. you know, <laughs> configured communication is you know is going to be a leader in the tele in the telecom spectrum. Okay. Um, you know, I envision you know a, you know building figures communication as a household name. Um, you know, for you know just globally. Global. So if you don't mind me asking, because a lot of times um, the Black Entrepreneur Blueprint family, they, they'll DM me if I'm doing an interview. Hey, man, how come you didn't ask this or that? <laughs> so mm -hmm. I know they're going to ask me in terms of figures communications. How many employees do you have right now? What's what's your, your annual revenues? So figures communication right now, we we employ over 60 um, in-house employees, um, you know, domestic um and you know majority of our employees they have the option to either come in the office or work from home oh great and right now i can tell you our company valuation right now is around 65 million dollars oh that's that's beautiful bro that's beautiful man um i wanted to talk about some of the innovation on some of your products so you had mentioned the cell phone um and you said it has dual i couldn't remember the exact word but so it, it had so so all of our phones come with dual sim card capabilities Okay. And um, all of our phones come with multi-user profile. Um, so, and yeah, tell us a little bit about that. That's what I wanted to get, multi-user so, profile. So the multi-user profile is actually perfect because a lot of our uh, major clients are health organizations. Okay. And when you think about the healthcare spectrum of a provider, he has a personal phone and then right. he has a company issue phone with a figures phone that combines into one. So with the multi-user right. profile, you can actually press one button, say sign out, sign into a guest profile, and, you know, you can hand your phone off to, you know, anyone, um, wow. you know, um, your, your children to play with it on the, on the consumer level, but on the professional, from the professional aspect of it, um, you have two phones in one, you have your personal phone and your, um, your company issue phone. And then wow. with the dual SIM card capabilities, it puts two SIM cards 
into one phone, which, you know, initially is two phone lines in one device. Right. So, wow, that's amazing, man. So if, if, can they both be active at the same time so I can get yes, personal sir. calls? Okay. And business calls. Yes, sir. Man, look, I'm, I need to call you. I'm going to show you this right here. Oh, no. We're going to switch you out. We're going we're gonna to switch you out. And, and another cool thing about our feature is our, um, not just from our phones, but on the telecom, on the telecom side mm -hmm. is um, you, when you think about traditional three-way calling, you can right. do a multiple conference calls. With a figures phone, you can add up to 16 callers at one time. Whoo. Oh, man. I know where I'm going as soon as this interview is over, bro. <laughs> I'm, Definitely. I'm you know, it's, it's Cyber Monday, so we got 50% off on everything. <laughs> oh, that's what's up. All right. But, man, yeah, I, I, when when I was doing research and I heard about that, I was like, man, this is that's, that's exactly what I need, man. Yes, sir. Uh, tell, tell us about, um, I know you have uh, some different technology when it comes to your earbuds, too, man, uh, in terms of different languages. So tell us a little bit about your, your, your F, what did they call F buds, right? F buds, correct. Yeah. So the okay. F buds are a patent technology. Um, when they're paired with the figures F3, if someone calls you speaking Spanish or French, it will automatically translate that into real time, into English or any preferred language that you have on your figures phone. Man, that's, that's insane, brother. What made you think, what made you come up with that, man? Well, looking at, looking at a lot of, um, and again, um, all of our products, you know, are solution based to, you know, some different issues, but, right. you know, having some, um, some providers that was going back and forth with patients and looking right. at what they're dealing with. So instead of them, you know, talking into a translator and then right. they're, they're getting the script out, I was like, you know, we could build something for that. Let's put the transcript script and the translator into the phone and then have that interconnect with the earbuds. Man, that's amazing, brother. Um, are there any other uh, products, physical products uh, that you guys have? Or oh, yes. Okay. So Tell us have, a little bit about those, too. So we have the Figures F55 um, smart television. That is a 55-inch smart TV that's 4K UHD mm -hmm. um, that has Prolithium already built inside. Okay. So um, Prolithium um, is an enterprise control solution that allows you to control the television, like a, a, a mobile device management system. Okay. Or a, um, um, a AT, like maybe at your home right now, you have an ATA box, um, right. from, you know, a receiver from Dish Network or Direct TV. That's mm -hmm. already built inside of our television. So as soon as you get our TV, you pop it out the box, give it an internet connection, and you got cable right then and there. Oh, man, that's hot, bro. And we have an, uh, an AI speaker that we have built, and um, we're continuously building on that um, every day with our community, um, artificial intelligence. So it's a smart speaker that, you know, says, you know, you can say, hey, figures, order me a pizza or, hey, figures, what's my traffic route today to work? And it'll wow. give you all the information you need. And it actually learns you. So it takes about two weeks when you, okay. when you first get it. And wow. only thing you need to do is just pair your phone with it and just go. Leave it plugged up at your house. And that's it. Man, so it almost sounds like a portable Alexa or or something like that. It, it, exactly, it's a it's a community form, and it it learns you. And the artificial intelligence makes that into our platform, mm -hmm. and it just builds around your entire profile. And I and I share it when when I say community form, as building out from different other um, environments and engagements with you know other people if they're running, they're jogging, um, right. if they're just um, you know maybe going to lunch. So it it learns it learns that interaction. Okay. So, oh, oh man. So it actually learns that based on your usage and how you use mm -hmm. the, the actual product. Now, do you ever think you're going to come out with a product that's going to rival Alexa or Google home or anything of that nature? Or are you going to stick, stick in the mobile space? Well, th that is, that, that's actually, um, what the, 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 the F55 speaker is. Okay. So, um, the figure speaker is, that's what it's, you know, is built upon. Okay. Um, initially, it was built upon um, as a, a wireless inductive charger, um, you know, that I, I built the concept around that as soon as you're five meters within range, your phone automatically starts charging. But due to the Department of, you know, Energy and, you know, bureaucrats, um, mm -hmm. it's, it's, that has been kind of delayed right now. Okay. And um, so we, 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 you know, instead of giving up on it, we molded it around, you know, artificial intelligence. Okay. So... Let me jump back to that real quick. So what you're saying is if I'm walking around uh, my house or could it be anywhere? I know 
you're having mm-hmm. an issue with you know getting it, it approved right now. But well, no, that's all. That this already out. So oh, it's, it's out. already out. Yeah, it's oh, out and available cool. on the market. So, but no, our our other our other our other. So initially, when we first built it, we mm-hmm. wanted to have it for wireless inductive charging. Gotcha. So what we did was we just circumvented back around and said, "Hey, listen, we'll we'll just do this as a community forum." So we okay. have we have it out and available right now on the market. All right. So, cl- clarify this up with me. So if I'm I can be at my house right now. And I, my phone could be charging while I'm walking around. Not that, no, not, not that, okay. not that, no, not that one. That's the Department of Energy. They, they okay. Push that's what that I mean. Yeah, gotcha. that's so, what I want to yeah. clarify. But um, yeah, but right now the um the the F speaker um you could be walking. It'll tell you how many steps you're taking um that gotcha. day. It could tell you, you know, um if you if you walk outside your house, it'll automatically send you a notification and says, hey, you know, um it's 7:59 a.m. Um, the route from your home to the office is such and such, and it's maybe a traffic delay here. So let me oh, give you man. an alternative route. It's just, that's crazy, bro. That's insane, man. That's a, that's amazing <laughs> technology, man. So um, do you have a, a a team that thinks up or comes up with these solutions, or is all of that you, man? So I have I have a think tank um in an initiative team around around me. Um but primarily um all of the um innovations come from me and I I you know we we work with all my team and I work together to to bring these into fruition. So there's really no I and team. So right. we're all working <laughs> on this together. Well, I'm gonna tell you, man, and I mean this in a good way. You're a mad scientist, brother. And that's <laughs> a good <laughs> thank you. To be, uh, but, that, to be. but but being able to 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 visualize things, identify issues, problems, and then create those solutions. So I talk about on the podcast all the time. One of the easiest ways to make money is to solve problems. That's it. You know, you find a problem. They don't care. Uh, people don't care if you're black, yellow, green, purple, whatever. It's all about solving the problem. So if you can solve problems. You know, you can market and, and, and actually present your 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 product or service as a solution. Then mm-hmm. people are going to buy it, man. So I like, I definitely like that concept, man. Thank um, you. And then go above it, above and beyond. No matter what you do, you know, just don't just deliver the product or service. Go above and beyond with it. And it sounds that's what you're doing with everything that you know, product that you're coming out with, man. Um, yes, sir. Let me ask you in terms of of marketing, you know, because in the long run, we're all in the marketing business. There's other competitors there you know even though i got you know a a great podcast there's other competitors out there uh doing the same thing i'm doing how do you differentiate yourself in terms of marketing what what allows you and figures communications to cut through the noise of all of the other big you know communications companies at&t verizon you know sprint and all that stuff how do you guys position yourself and uh make a dent in that industry so what we do, we do something that's a little bit different. You know, we'll let you try out our products and we ask you to tell a friend. Um, when you think about um, consumer electronics, everyone always thinks about the, the first big brand name. Right. They don't think about the, the there's other companies out there that, that manufactures and does the exact same thing, but maybe better instead right. of having a, a big brand name and a more expensive price on it. So what we did was we did our grassroots campaign. We went, you know, um, started very small and, you know, city by city and Mm -hmm. and expanded out from there. Okay. Um, And when you say grassroots, was it, was it, uh, do you have any physical locations, stores or anything? And have you ever thought about that as creating a dealer network? So you? the the physical so a dealer network we we do we do offer that um, as of today okay. um, the phys, physical brick and mortar um, Amazon have shown us that that's that's dead right and especially right now with COVID um, oh, but yeah. what we do have is a shipping platform that's you know out of this world with our courier service if okay. you order today you'll receive it tomorrow if you're in the state of Florida and you order today you'll receive it today oh man. So those that's logistics right there. Yes, sir. That's all. <laughs> yeah, and we make so. it convenient for people. So it, we, we ship up to 10 p.m. at night. So, you know, they'll be getting that, you know, whatever product that they order the same day. If they're in the state of Florida, if they're not, the next day they'll have it. Now, I'm, I'm probably going to know the answer to this question. Did you create, did, did you create the logistics software? 
Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yes. I think that was very yeah. Because I, it was no, it was no, you know, out of the can solution for what we were trying to do. Right. Um, and we know we looked at um we looked at Amazon's fulfillment operation of um Atlas leasing of okay. you know all of the um you know Amazon vans and the you know the Amazon planes, but you know that's not Amazon, that's Atlas. Right. So um, you know, instead of us trying to, you know, create the wheel, we just um we built our own platform and used our own local couriers in the area to d- deliver our products. Wow. Man, so in terms of the availability for the figures phone, the, the F3, is that available nationwide? Yes, sir. It's available nationwide and globally. We we okay. ship uh, every single day, domestic and abroad. Um, we've shipped to over um, over a hundred countries, and I mean, we've shipped. We have a customer pretty much in every state um, in the, within the United States. So. Let me ask you uh, from a marketing perspective. So I want, I like to sometime as the, as the old folks say, put it where the goats can get it. So, <laughs> so the figures F3, uh, what are some of the benefits, uh, you know, versus some of the major carriers out there? I know the technology is like out of this world. So we all yes, know that, but uh, what are some of the other benefits you would say? One of the most beautiful benefits is affordability. Um, the technical <laughs> specifications, behind the big name companies, their, their product, the average consumers don't even know, you know, half of what was in the phone. Right. Um, figures F3 comes with some of the most um, advanced uh, specifications, such as the, um, the camera, the processor, uh, the multi-user profile, the dual SIM card capabilities, and our unlimited terabit of storage. So you don't have to worry about paying for cloud storage for your photos. Everything is stored right then and there on our network, absolutely free. Wow. Uh, So in terms of compatibility, in terms of if I want to download my photos and everything, same compatibility as any other? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Everything is interchangeable. And we have a um, a setup feature that's on the Figures F3 that interchanges with um, um, iOS, um, Android, a Windows device, and um, I went back in the day to BlackBerry, even though it's, you know not that many of those left around. But you can actually sync and download everything into to um, the Figures F3, and um, continue to use your phone as normal function. Oh man, I, I'm I'm telling you, Brian, this is no joke. I'm literally as soon as I get off of this interview, I'm literally going to go and order order one of your F3s, man. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, definitely. And our phone is globally it's globally unlocked, so it works on every single network. Um, oh, wow. We have all 57 um, uh, LTE bands. So okay, it's good to go. Yeah. So uh, now, how about if I'm traveling another country? Do I need to do anything? And let you know, like for example, like when I go to other other countries with I have Verizon right now, I let them know, hey, I'm traveling to such and such now i don't know why they when you'll, when you'll be back so yes yeah. yeah. so what we what we have um we have different plans that set up so we have what's called a globe trotter plan um, okay globe trotter plan if you set it up here domestically when you travel abroad it automatically kick in so you don't have to worry about you know calling us saying hey i'm going to the bahamas or you know right. jamaica for the weekend um but even though bahamas is in in our network as domestic right. Um, but you know, if you're going, you know, abroad, you don't have to call figures communications at all. It's already set up in your phone. You're good to go. Now that's what's up, man. Um, I got a couple more questions for you, bro. Um, and once again, I appreciate you taking out the time to share with the black entrepreneur blueprint family. Um, you, you've got a tremendous amount of success already at a very young age and you, you put the work in and everything that you've gotten, you deserve. Where do you see yourself personally? and figures communications uh, in the next five years? In the next five years, we have so many different um, concepts that we're trying to bring into fruition. Uh, We're going back and forth with the um, USPTO, um, the Patents Office, to to bring those um, ideas um, and our concepts um, into reality. Um, the next five years, I, I see us as being a, a global, a global telecommunications leader for, you know, not just telecom, but for consumer electronics. Oh, wow. There's so many different things that, um, that, that we're building, um, right now, something personally that I'm, I'm working on, um, is a sub-zero medical freezer that could store the COVID vaccine at, um, minus, uh, uh 80 degrees Celsius. Oh man. So that's something right now that um we I've pretty much um perfected 
And um, we're just um, getting all the logistics in order because we're using liquefied natural gas. Okay. So um, with that, you have to be very, very, very careful. So um, <laughs> just putting all that together and we're putting, we're going to get ready to start putting some into some local hospitals here in Florida. Cool. Um, in terms of some of your um, consumer electronics, I, I know you're working on some stuff and you may not want to give out any information, but I know you have the television right now. Anything else that you could share with the uh, Black Entrepreneur Blueprint family? Um, for, for, in healthcare, um, we have um, a smart um, um, blood glucometer. Okay. Um, when you think about the standard glucometer that's on the market right now, when you check your blood sugar, mm -hmm. how does someone keep a log of it? They actually have to write it down. Exactly. And they have to take it to the doctor. You know, it takes 157 seconds to go into a diabetic coma. If it's the weekend or the middle of the night and you wrote down your, your glucose readings, it's it's pointless. Yeah. Um, our glucometer, as soon as you check your blood sugar, it instantly shares those results to your cell phone, shares it with your closest relatives, mm -hmm. shares it in your in electronic health records, and it shares it with your provider. Wow. So if your blood sugar spiked or abnormally low, everyone will get an Amber Alert notification at one time. Not a text message, but an Amber Alert. Amber Alert, wow. Um, if it's 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, that's going to wake you up. Um, okay. Also, um, when you get this Amber Alert type of notification, um, the same concept that I put into my father's shoe with the mm -hmm. two-way DTT communication system, right. I imported right. that into the glucometer. So oh. a doctor can press a button, you know, from his office and say, or, you know, a charge nurse and say, hey, I need to get in touch with, you know, Freddie. Um, I need to schedule an appointment to come into my office. They'll come in as a two-way right into the glucometer. So um, that 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 instantly would, you know, get the patient's attention and say, okay, it's time for us to go in. But before the, the, the patient and the provider hangs up with each other, a five-digit code will pop up on the glucometer, and that the, the patient will have to provide that code to the provider in order for them to type that into the EMR. So that keeps everything um, compliant that keeps gotcha. the patient compliant and it keeps the, the provider compliant is, you know, I did speak with the patient. So it's not hearsay. Wow. Yeah. That's man. That's amazing, brother. I, this, this brings to light another question I have. So I'm, I'm, I've been a serial entrepreneur for 25 plus years, over 17 different businesses. And, and I do business coaching too. And one of the biggest questions, and I, I want to ask you this is I get is that as an entrepreneur, Sometimes we might have, um, my, my wife says, I, I think you got ADD because you got all of these ideas going on. Yes. Right? <laughs> yes. So she tells me that all the time. But how do you manage all of those ideas that pop into your head? And how are you able to, to move and, and effectively move forward on those ideas? Is there a certain strategy that you use or is it just innate for you? How, how does that work? So what before before we build any for me personally, what I do is I usually carry around a, a notepad and I have a voice recorder with me so I can, you know, write it down right then and there and I record myself, you know, um, talking about it. Um, but before I bring any concept into fruition, I always look at what is it? OK, so what is the idea? What is the what, what, what would be the service area and how could it be a solution to something that's not already that's on the market right now? Um, for me personally, I don't like to fight on many battlefronts. Um, I like to focus on one area, make that perfected, um, even though there's no such thing as perfection. <laughs> right. And, right. um, and then I will move on to the next, um, the next venture. Um, there, there personally for me right now, I, I am involved into about 30 different areas, um, of different products, um, not just not just telecommunication, but in, in different areas for aviation, okay. um, uh, the, uh, the Pfizer COVID vaccine, medical freezer, and in healthcare. But um, I focused all of my energy onto what can I accomplish first, and what can I close out and to go to the next. Because when you fight on multiple battlefronts, you, you you're gonna lose every time. Yeah, that's a great that's a great piece of advice, man. Great pieces of advice, folks. So BEB family, let the light bulb go off right there. You hear you hear what Brother Freddie just said. <laughs> you can't fight on multiple fronts at the same time. Um, in terms of your, your team or your network, I know most businesses are only as good as, as their team. How do you find good employees? And is, is there a certain way that you vet them uh, to, to find out if they're right for your culture? 
So I, per, for me, um, when when betting and when I go down to HR and kind of like, you know, snoop in on who they're going <laughs> to hire, I've always liked to learn the person personally. I like to learn what are their their their, their moral values. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's one thing that's very, that, that, that means everything to me. Um, you know, personally, there's ways to make money without taking advantage of people. Definitely. And when you look at some of the corporations, they just don't care. They will bleed you dry and then, then send you an invoice. Um, with figures communication, we've always believed in, you know, honesty and integrity and giving the, you know, the best product and service that we can offer. So I like to learn, um, the employees. I like to, and you know, I don't, I don't really really use the word employees. I always say, you know, team members. So I learned all of my, I learned all of my team members. I learned their personal values. I I, I learned their family and I I learned that, you know, how, how do they operate? Um, you know, what kind of person you are, what, what do you like to eat? You know, that kind of thing and, and, get, and really get to know them because, you know, you don't know who they're on the phone with. They could be on the phone with, you know, someone that says, Hey, I want to, I want to purchase, you know, a hundred thousand phones. And if they right. haven't, if they're, if they're a nasty character or they have, you know, ill will intentions that could, that could ruin the whole, whole entire sale right then and there. So right. I learned, I get, I learn people personally first, and then I go to, Okay, what are your skill sets? Okay, this is what you can do. Okay, this is what not your you're not this you're strong in this. So let's kind of move you around and we get the best of the best. So now, did it take you a while to figure that out? Because what you talked about in, in in the initial part of the interview that mm-hmm. your your best friend was your computer, so you were focusing on you know doing what you enjoy doing. So mm-hmm. did it take you a while to learn people or learn how to manage? And and delegate or, or or help people delegate, you know, different yeah. projects. Okay. At, at at first, for me, um, you know, it was it was very difficult, you know, starting out because I I did everything, um, right. Again, because of limited resources, I built my own cell phone towers. Um, I laid concrete. I laid the um the Cat Five cables. I mean, I I, I did everything. So for me to give up that kind of control. It right. was it was difficult for the first few years um, because I I, w- I would get up in the morning at four a.m. and don't get home until twelve. I would Ooh. make sure that you know orders are complete, orders are shipped out, orders are delivered. The warehouse logistics, everything is going smoothly, um, everything just organized. And um, you know, putting people in place, um, I learned that um, you have to trust the right people, and that goes back to learning a person's character. Right. Because when you try to micromanage, again, that's fighting on multiple battlefronts. You're gonna lose. So, so that's why, you know, I put the, you know, the, the, the best trusted people around that has the best, that, that have the company's best intentions to continue to grow. And, um, you know, I, I entrusted them with everything. Now that makes a lot of sense. It, and it's funny because in order for companies to grow, a lot of times we're going to have to release or relinquish some of that control. Mm-hmm. And I know for founders, you know, myself included, it took, a long time for me to be able to do that because I thought, wow, nobody's going to do it right as well as I'm going to do it. But guess what? Sometimes we don't need them to do as well as we do it. As long as good enough is, is good enough. As, right. So that can allow me to do things that are at a, a at a higher level that are going to be more impactful to the company in the long run. So yeah. what, speaking of that, uh, Freddie, what is your normal day look like? Are you still, into the programming or are you more on the macro side where you're overseeing every everything? So um, for initial programming for like billing our phone, uh, like for billing our new phone operating system, I'm into every single <laughs> component of it. Um, every code, every line of script, I mean, pretty much everything. Gotcha. Um, on the manufacturing aspect, um, once we once we create a, a a bomb of you know you know five thousand to ten thousand different um, units, I kind of walk away from it. But in in the initial stages of you know just manufacturing that, I'm all I'm I'm day to day operation on that because I want to make sure that every component is there, and that nothing is missed. You're not gonna miss a capacitor. You're not gonna miss the, you know inserting you know an additional power source here. So right. again, we have to make sure before we stamp our name on it that this is proven, this is working, and this is good to go. Man, um, I got two more quick, well, actually three quick questions for you because I don't want to hold you too long. No, I'm fine. Thank you. Oh, okay. Um, speaking of stamping your name on it, what made you decide to use your last name as the company name? Um, because, you know, going back to my father, um, you know, 
he was my everything. And I wanted to continue to keep that name growing. I mean, when you look at uh, different companies um, right now, you look at Ford, it became from Henry Ford. Right. You look at, um, you know, Wells, Henry, you know, Wells Fargo, Loomis. Um, so, you know, again, you know, I wanted to keep that, you know, to keep that going. Um, you know, um, my name have drawn criticism from, you know, <laughs> from some weird people I that, got call you. Our, that call our call center um, and say some weird things. But, you know, hey, you, you again, you know, they, you know, they criticized um, the 44th president for his name. So exactly. you know, keep going. Got a thick skin now, but that, that, that makes a lot of sense, though, in terms of, you know, honoring your parents and, you know, and, and yourself. And once again, you made a great point. You got Ford, you got Wells Fargo, you got you know, Lehman, well, they're not even around anymore. Morgan yeah. Stanley, all of that type of stuff. So that makes a lot of sense, man. Um, For the entrepreneurs that are watching this and are listening to this and the prospective entrepreneurs, what would be your biggest piece of advice in terms of starting your business? The biggest piece of advice is to make sure whatever you do, no matter what it is, that you have a passion for it. Don't go in, you know, thinking about the money, you know, again, it, it, you, you're going to have to think about how to keep the lights on. Right. But just don't don't be don't don't do not be money driven, you know, because you're going to fail at it. I mean, I've seen so many different um, businesses that have came to, to came to us for, you know, investments and, and support and mm -hmm. every single one of them that was just focused on return on investment, return on investment. They failed. And, um, you know, I've always teach people just have a passion for what you do and make sure you go above and beyond when you do it. If you tell somebody I'm going to be there, at, you know, 10 o'clock, be there at 930. You know, if you say I'm going to have this delivered by Friday, actually physically delivered on Thursday. So just to go above and beyond because customer service is everything. Right. And that is, you know, 80 percent of your business. That that sounds like old school wisdom from your parents, man. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's powerful, man. Um, is there anything that you'd like to add to the interview or anything that I forgot to pull out or just didn't pull out that you'd like to share with the Black Entrepreneur Blueprint family? Yeah, just definitely. Just, you know, don't, you know, don't let your circumstances define who you are. You know, you may have a, a great business idea and, you know, your business may, you know, may be going a little bit slow today, but tomorrow is a, an, an entirely different day. And I mean, if you continue to work hard at it, it will grow because for me, when I personally started out, it was very <laughs> difficult. I mean, it was so many challenges, so many obstacles in my way to, you know, I was going to give up, but you, you know, you, you can never give up on, you know, something that you have a passion for. Definitely. And I'm sure it probably was a little difficult for you too, being as young as you are dealing with some of these companies, you know, you're 16, 17 years old and they're like, what? Especially, especially when people wanted to pay you in candy, man. That was, <laughs> that was kind of unique. <laughs> You stop taking candy, right? Yeah, and I'm like, no. <laughs> That's what's up, man. And and the last question I have for you, brother, if there is one person that you could talk to, have a conversation with, living or dead, who would it be and why? I would say probably, um, I think of Andrew Carnegie. Andrew Carnegie? And why would that be? I would I would say Andrew Carnegie because, I mean, this guy he made a... An, 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 he, he started a company, made an enormous fortune, sold it, and then turned around and saw his steel and all of his, his products that he created being used for war and mass killings. And he turned, he, he dedicated his entire life to, 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 to not just, well, to give it, to give him back, to stop what was actually created. So it would just be an interesting conversation with that to see you know, how, you know, you go from this enormous net worth, and, but you die of a broken heart, seeing, a, seeing what you created and being right. used for the wrong, wrong oh, doing. Jesus. Yeah. Brother Freddie Figgies, man, I appreciate you so much, man, for sharing with the Black Entrepreneur Blueprint family. Brother, you have an amazing story. Uh, I just love your energy, man. I love, I, I love the way that you look at things, man. You're looking at things with a positive uh, outlook. And you're not making any excuses for where you are and where you started, brother. And that's what we got to do. We have to hold ourselves yeah. accountable. You want to be successful. Hey, it, it pay. You got to pay to be successful. Okay. When, when you just said that you'd be up four in the morning, come in at 12 midnight, that's commitment, brother. 
that's sure. commitment. Yeah, and uh, we we respect that, man. We appreciate it. And like I always tell the Black Entrepreneur Blueprint family, anytime we have guests on, please support our guests, support this brother. He's doing tremendous things. And like I said, I'm about to hit this uh, website, man. What? Oh, let me get your contact information. Uh, where people can find out about you and also to purchase some of your products, man. I almost forgot that. Yes, sir. So our website is figures.com. That's F-I-G-G-E-R-S.com. That's for all of our telecommunications. Cool. And personally for me, you can find me on social medias, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter at Freddie Figures, F-R-E-D-D-I-E-F-I-G-G-E-R-S. My man, I appreciate you, brother. Thank you so much, man, for sharing with the BEB family, man. Thank you, brother Jones. Thank you for having me. All right. That was an amazing interview with my man, Freddie Figures, the founder of Figures Communications. Make sure you guys go to figures.com and check out everything that Freddie has going on. And if it's something that you like or something that you need, please make sure you support the brother. He's doing tremendous things. Now, before we get to the last quarter of the show where I give my takeaways, I just want to share all my social media contact information and my resource links. So at the top of the show, I mentioned my new book, A New Black Wall Street, Circulating the Black Dollar Worldwide by Building Successful E-Commerce Businesses. So if you're interested in building a successful, sustainable e-commerce business, go to anewblackwallstreet.com. Pick yourself up a copy, $14.95 for the print version, $9.95 for the digital version. Now, if you're watching this on video, the actual print book is right behind me on the counter. Now, if you need additional assistance, building your successful, sustainable e-commerce business, I created a compatible online course, my flagship course titled Brand Builder Academy Elite. You can go to bbaelite.com and it is a 14 week inclusive program that takes you from point A to point Z in building a, either a physical products brand or a digital products brand. So go to bbaelite.com Make sure you use the coupon code BBAELITE100. Save $100 off of the fee. It is only $97. Also, I mentioned at the top of the show, I created two platforms to help circulate dollars in the worldwide black economy. The first one is BeSmartByBlack.com. So you, if you are a black product producer and you want to sell your products to black consumers worldwide, upload your product information. It is totally free. Be smart, buy black.com and sell to black consumers all over the world. Now, for you freelancers, I didn't forget about you guys. So if you do anything on fiverr.com or freelancer.com, upload your information to hireblackfreelancers.com, H-I-R-E, blackfreelancers.com and connect with black consumers and black business owners that want to hire black freelancers. So also... I wanted to mention too, the new rebranded, rebooted Black Entrepreneur Blueprint Academy is up and is still running. And we got new content going in there every other week. So you can go to bebacademy.com, get five days free access to all the content. So any training or courses that you want to take, you have complete free access for five days. Just go to bebacademy.com. Now, in terms of connecting with me, family, if there's anything long, please hit me on my email, jjones at blackentrepreneurblueprint.com, jjones at blackentrepreneurblueprint.com, J-A-Y-J-O-N-E-S. And I know I'm giving you all a lot, but you can also go to bebconnect.com, that's bebconnect.com. Everything that I just said and that I'm getting ready to say it's going to be on that page on my website, bebconnect.com. Facebook, you can hit me at Black Entrepreneur Blueprint. Twitter, jjones001. Instagram, jjones for real. That's J A Y J O N E S, the number four, R E A L. YouTube, go to YouTube, type in Black Entrepreneur Blueprint. Make sure you hit that subscribe button because I have additional content that is on YouTube that is not on the podcast. And yes, the podcast does come out on YouTube but there's still additional content there. LinkedIn, just go search for Jay Jones, Black Entrepreneur Blueprint. Uh, if you wanna be included in the BEB text line for notifications and special reminders, text BEB to 555-888. That's BEB to 555-888. And if you're on Clubhouse, check me at it, out at, um, at I am Jay Jones. That's at I am Jay Jones on Clubhouse, one of the newest social media uh, platforms out there that people are really rocking with. 
So now let's get ready to do this last session of, section of the program, and we're going to do some takeaways about the interview with my man Freddie Figures. That was an amazing interview with Mr. Freddie Figures, and I just want to give you guys a couple of quick takeaways, things that really stood out to me uh, in the interview. Uh, one of the things is based on Freddie's upbringing, being abandoned by his biological mother um, and, and basically left outside and being blessed to be, be adopted by the Figures family. Uh, he talked about really it's not the way you start, but it's the way you finish. And so there were all types of barriers uh, for Freddie growing up, but he didn't let that stop him. Uh, one of the things that I really like was he had an inner drive. And so he didn't try to fit in with, with other people or, or, or be like everybody else. He was true to himself. So he was into computers. He enjoyed reading. And what he did was he used that and he leveraged the talents that he had and basically leveraged that to the success that he has today with Figures Communications, uh, valued at over $60 million plus uh, and 60 some odd employees. Uh, another thing that he really touched on that I like was he was talking about doing things that you're passionate about, not focusing on the money. And that's something that I had to learn the hard way. A lot of times we chase money all the time. And what we find out at the end is that that's really not necessarily the best way to do it. So if you're doing something or you're, you're, you're in something that you're passionate about, you're going to be able to run through those walls, jump over the hurdles, go under the obstacles because it's something that you're passionate about. If you're not passionate about something and you're just chasing the money, anytime you run into a brick wall or something that you think you can't get around, an obstacle, then you're probably going to quit. And then what happens is it's a vicious cycle. You're going to start again. It's like, oh, man, all right, now let me find some other money to chase somewhere else as opposed to just really honing in and focusing on what you want to do. So I had a conversation with one of my coaching students the other day. Um, I just kind of want to share or paraphrase how that went. And uh, the young brother was talking about eventually I asked him where did he want to uh, be in a couple of years, and he said he wanted to be out his own, on his own doing you know, writing and things of that nature. And so the question was, if money was no object, what would you be doing, right? And so if you had all your bills taken care of, your living expenses, basically he was saying, this is what I would do. I would write. And I said, cool. I said, so the objective is let's figure out a way how you can get to that point. And it always comes down to passive income. Cash flow plus passive income equals freedom. So I asked him, I said, so why are you working? And the, the answer was for a paycheck. And so if you ask people that, most people are working for the paycheck, not because they, they're passionate about what they do. And so once you get to a certain space where that just doesn't make sense for you anymore, right now you may have to do that based on your situation. But when it comes to a point where it doesn't make sense anymore, you know, you got to figure out a way to get there. So work on things that you're passionate about and the money will follow. So once again, family, you know how we do. Make sure you check out figures.com. Check out all the products and services that, that they provide. You know, Freddie is an amazing young brother, only 31 years old. And once again, you don't have to be 50 years old to start a business. So you see his, his, his actual uh, progression from young entrepreneur now into an adult entrepreneur. And the faster you can start on that track, remember, it has to be the right time for you, the better off you're going to be in the long run. Um, and I say this each and every week, guys, before we close on out, we've been getting more and more downloads, and that's attributed to you, the BEB family. Please continue to spread the word about the podcast and the blog. And once again, it's more than that. It's a movement. It's about building an economic power base in the black community. Love you guys. See you same time next week. Peace.